containing COVID-19 remains a priority, not just here in Korea, but also in Germany. Authorities there are battling a resurgence that pushed the daily tally to over 50,000 cases last Thursday. For more, I have Jan Rubel live on the line. Rubel, it's been a while. Jan, it's been a while, that is. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right, Jan. Good to I see you again, Sonny. It really is, Jan. Now, here, there has been a retreat in the daily tally today since last Thursday's alarming figure. Do start with the overall situation there in Germany. And, Jan, do tell us a bit about the reasons behind the recent rise in infections there. Well, you know, the incidence is uh, rising strongly. And, you know, we had a calm summer. Everybody felt relieved. But then happened what the scientists had already predicted a long time ago. And... Now we saw in the last seven days uh, 303 infections per 100,000 infections. And of course, this puts a lot of pressure into the system. And we have now more than 3,000 people in the intensive care units. And this means uh, for other patients that a lot of other surgeries have to be postponed. Even some patients have been flown out to Bolzano and Meran in Italy. And this is of course, a difficult situation. I mean, until now, the hospitals give us a notice that it's still under control, but uh, I mean, soon they will reach the limit. That is pretty sure. I see. Yeah, at least 67% of Germany's population of 83 million is fully vaccinated, and there appears to be little change in that rate itself. Now, is vaccine hesitancy still an issue there? And if so, how are authorities in Germany seeking to address it? You know, this is our main issue uh, because, uh, you know, most of the infections we are facing now are with the unvaccinated. And until now we have 68% uh, in Germany who are fully um, vaccinated. But it is simple. We didn't reach the critical mass of uh, vaccinated people in Germany in order to curb the spread of the virus. Uh, and the problem is, of course, who is until now not vaccinated doesn't want to be vaccinated. So the question is how to reach them, how to convince them. And yes, the, the government is promoting vaccinations, of course, but not massively because uh, we are in, in, in Germany, the politics is in a kind of a limbo now. You know, we had elections in September the old government is only managing, the new government is still uh, not in power, and this uh, keeps us all in a vacuum, and nobody knows how to proceed now. Right. And talking about the unvaccinated, Jan, neighboring Austria has reimposed movement restrictions against the unvaccinated, while the Netherlands has reintroduced a partial national lockdown. What options are being explored by Germany then? Well, until now, there, there are no lockdowns being planned. But uh, as we see the situation now, it can change very fast. Um, uh, I could imagine a lockdown just before Christmas, by example, or that we will have uh, to see and store the so-called 2G reglement in Germany, which means that only vaccinated or recovered people get access to certain institutions or services. Uh, a harsh lockdown like we are going to see in Austria I don't see this happening in Germany unless the figures become really catastrophic. And how to go on now, uh, this is really difficult to forecast. I mean, of course, we know we need some pressure. Um, but, you know, it's in Germany, like in any other country, you ask two Germans, you get three answers. And uh, when you ask me personally, I think you spent a lot of time trying to convince people now it's time to act, now it's um, to put some pressure and to act. Jan, do you see a, perhaps a, a change in testing options over in Germany to encourage people, well, to better uh, keep track of infections there? Yes, of course. The, the new government promised to continue or to recontinue with testing. Um, but I am asking myself, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm writing about politics. But um, I'm asking myself, what can tests help now in this situation? Only vaccinations can help because nobody knows if these tests are working really, really good unless they are PCR tests. And, but these are not the tests we are talking about in Germany. So I think testing is a nice maneuver for not doing nothing.
Right. What about the academic arena, Jan? Is that being left open given the potential risks exposed to teenagers who have yet to be vaccinated in Germany, right? Yes, people, people above 12 years, they, are, uh, they can be vaccinated and uh, until now schools are open and this is what uh, um, the government is giving uh, as our message that the schools shall remain open until the last thing we are going to stop. Um, but the situation is now difficult and we will see what's going on, you know, in the, in, in, since the beginning of the pandemics and the first and the second lockdown, the young ones, the students, the pupils, they were the first ones to suffer. And now there is a promise that they will be the last ones to suffer due to restrictions. But I'm not so sure if the government really can, can help this promise. Right. Moving on, Professor Quack, the European Medicines Agency recently recommended Celtrion's antibody therapy, Recurona. What are the implications of this vote of confidence from Europe's drug regulator? Well, it, signifi uh, it signifies the, uh, the, um, their recognition of legitimacy of the efficacy uh, of this particular treatment regimen. Uh, I think it'll be beneficial both to the country that starts to use it and also to the company in Korea as well. Uh, the fact that they can start, uh, they have another tool at hand to really approach the, the patients before they became, uh, become uh, severe in their progress is it'll be very uh, much of a high benefit to the country that start to use it. But also at the same time as the exporting company or uh, country, uh, we would also benefit from the sales of it. Now from the clinical point of view though, is that it's still an IV drug. So it has to be applied to patients who can receive, who are in a situation inside the hospital being admitted to receive the IV, uh, as opposed to the oral regimens that are uh, bound to be uh, hit the market pretty soon. So I guess in a sense that we have to sort of uh, protocol or make a protocol, come up with a protocol so that to, before the oral regimens become available, we would be able to actually use these products to the appropriate people. That's one of the homeworks that I guess both the countries and the company has to do currently. Right, and staying with Celtrion's Recurona, Jan, I hear the approval process for this antibody therapy has been proceeding at a prompt pace there. Could you tell us more? Yeah, this, this gives us hope. The European Medicines Agency uh, has paved the way for approval of this uh, medicament, Recurona. And now it is up to the EU Commission to give the final decision. Um, but you know, you can assume that this would be only a formal uh, decision, that it will be approved soon. Um, this is a good perspective because I think it's very important to have a variety of therapies uh, fighting this virus. Right, of course. All right, Jan, as always, thank you very much for the latest from your part of the world at this hour. I thank you, Sunny.